Anyways, uh, this yeah, this video was supposed to be done a while ago, but I made the mistake of recording my audio in stereo, so it was very left ear heavy and wasn't fucking balanced, so now it should be. Now this is not my first storage tech video, nor will it probably be my last, but I finally finished my main storage for my single player world. Why did I bother designing a new storage system from the ground up when I already have two other designs? Well, first of all, they're shit and I'll explain why later. Second of all, uh, I designed them over a year ago and there's now much better things and I'm also much better redstone, so I can finally make systems that suck slightly less. But you can also ask, hey, why don't you use someone else's storage system? And that's a good question. But I also like designing things for myself, so I'm not gonna do that. I was gonna make an entire rant on why you shouldn't listen to hardcore YouTubers, but I'll give you the TLDR of it. Hardcore YouTubers suck. Stalkercraft sucks. Storage tech's about two years behind on YouTube, and that's about all you need to know. Go into an archive server, they're much better. Cool, 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 cool. Now, what makes storage tech possible? Very simply, the answer is hoppers. It allows for movement of items through containers and allows for the conversion of items in their entity form to their stored form. Without hoppers, automatic storage systems don't exist. But, on the other hand, a lot of hoppers is not good. Hoppers are notoriously laggy to the point where they can easily spike your MSVT with a lot of them. But, with mods like Lithium, hoppers revert to their significantly less laggy locked form when they're doing nothing. But still, just lock your hoppers. J just do it. Also, while I was recording this, the most recent snapshot for Minecraft just came out, and you can now put a block on top of a hopper, which stops its function from trying to pull from above, which is it, the hopper's most laggiest part of it. We used to put composters, but that's like 1.20 was that 1.21 or something but basically anything before that put a composter on top uh and you'll be good cool 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 now we have to talk about reliability this is a very interesting part of storage check and this is the reason why it takes so long for designs to come out droppers box breaking by piston item falling momentum items being pushed by slime block there's also hash hoarder there's also directionality. There's also locationality. And those are just a few of the inconsistencies that come with testing redstone. Most of these I did have to deal with within the system, but I'm pretty sure I got most of them, or preferably all of them, but we'll see. But if you do see any issues, uh, just put in the comment section, I'll deal with them. Now that I've explained all that, let me explain to you why all my other storage systems are shit. And the first bad design decision I made are these halls. They don't look bad from the inside, they're actually pretty decent. But the issue is, is hopper locking. I just didn't fucking lock hoppers. Now originally when I was designing this, my decisions I made for reasons not locking hoppers, I wanted items to flow from here to there and not have to fucking unlock shit but it's kind of stupid and uh don't fucking do that and also yeah these hoppers are just not really that locked like the input hoppers are locked for the most part but other than that this, this is not it's not locked secondly this input i made the same issue on my second version of having a general item input these just kind of suck to deal with so um don't use them. We also have this bulk here. This bulk is supposed to be two items per slice, which, yeah, I mean, technically it does do two items a slice, but it uses unreliable box loaders. Why are they unreliable? Items can get stuck right up there sometimes when they break the box. So just keep that in mind. Also, yeah, this thing just isn't fucking hopper locked. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, really bad. Here, I'm, I'm gonna just show you. So this isn't its default state. It's entirely off. We do a count hopper command. 
This thing has 2,254 hoppers, which isn't really that bad for the system. It's, it's all right. It's not great. But if we do this, enabled true, we have 878 hoppers that are just unlocked. That's like 40% of the entire thing just natively unlocked. That's pretty bad. Now we're here at this bitch. This is the second storage system I've ever made. This thing uses a bunch of unreliable shit, which I then later found out was unreliable. So first thing is I use this unstackable sorter. This one is designed by Kiku. Apparently it's unreliable. I never found it to be unreliable, but like I'm just going to assume it's unreliable. For some reason, I did wiring with fucking this. I... I I really don't know why I did that. I could have just used redstone wire, but that's there now. I think this is the Glotz Unloading Array 2.3. And the thing is with it is the system isn't bad. It's just I put it in a terrible spot. This should have been underneath there just so I have to load less chunks. So this thing would become less laggy, but I could have just taken it, slapped it under there and called it a day. And this had the same issue as the first one where I had a general item input. I just have a box in there for now. And these holes, I made a big mistake of putting 15 items before I put a separation. It should be 16. Minecraft deals with uh, items in like batches of 16 because you have like all the color variants those are all in 16 so i made the same mistake as my 2.1 of using a unreliable okay this one is more reliable but it's not slice preserving so when this box breaks most of the time it'll go into this hopper obviously but every once in a while a box will go into the hopper adjacent to it this means that it's not slice preserving it doesn't keep the box in the same slice which can cause i don't know something like deep slate boxes to end up in the deep slate brick box it won't happen too much and if even if it does you can just take it and move it over but it's just something to keep in mind then we have this bulk this bulk is way fucking bigger than it needs to be and the wiring for it which is down here is also way more complicated than it needs to be the chunk loaders down here use a toggle state um i don't know why i added a toggle state but all of them use toggle states even though i could have just done a fucking wire that goes around I, I don't know so now let's talk about the hopper count so we do count a hopper it's 5,758 hoppers, which isn't bad. That's a pretty reasonable amount for the size of a system. But if we do enabled, just like I did in the last one, 2,358 hoppers is a horrendous amount of hoppers to have unlocked. That's just as bad as the other one. It's like around 40%. But yeah, all these issues should be should be fixed in the new one. There's also accessible halls. I'll talk about these in a second. Now, having said all that, storage tech is still base as fuck, and what you may like may not be what someone else likes, and that's where the fun idea of trade-offs come in. Now, designing a system with all or at least most of the aspects fitting as many people who are going to be using this system is very hard and time-consuming. Luckily for me, for me designing the storage system, I only need to care about myself. So, whatever you may like, I don't really have to care about, and I don't plan on caring about, so... If you don't like it, you could change it, it's not my problem. Now, if you look at the world download, you may see that the item layout is a bit odd, and that's because my access to wreath- there's a tree burning down back there. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> what was I talking about? Now, you may have noticed that my item layout is a bit different compared to what you'd expect in it, and that's because my access to resources is a bit different compared to every other place. Server? No, place. Sit world world that's what i'm looking for and that's just because of the rules i have on my single player world now i'm thinking about changing these for the sake of fucking uploading but I'll, that's for an entirely different time anyways uh yeah they're just gonna be different you can change them oh it's a lava thing i see that took forever to fucking flow i was there for like an hour what the hell now the main goal of a storage system is to get items that are not organized into a manner that they can be easily accessed and located to make getting items for other projects easier the main thing to consider outside of ui is getting from a point where the items are unorganized to a point where they can easily be findable in relation to build effort storage capacity and speed some sorting styles are better than others but the main one i'll be focusing on is set based commonly known as the boy and style unloader but before i get to explaining that i need you to understand the reason why and how we speed up a storage system now before we talk about how we speed up a system we need to talk about filters now we have three kinds of filters the first one i'm going to talk about is signal strength three this is the most common type of filter the issue is with it it can only buffer up to 23 items at a time so it can only accept 23 items before it fills up and then it starts to filter. The nice thing about this filter is since it's just a tileable, you don't actually have to think too much. You can just keep throwing the same slice over and over and it will always work. But as I've said before, this one buffers a lot of items, which is why we also have a signal strength 2 slash signal strength I. 
SSI means just signal strength independent. That's the reason why it's called that. But this is the most common type for big storage systems. Signal strength I has the properties that's able to buffer only one item as a filter. It will filter out all the others. That only applies for filters that are 8 game ticks and below. So for something like a 10 game tick, we have to buffer one more item. But once you put another item in there, it'll release it back through. So it'll only have a max buffer size of two items. The issues with it is since it is AB tileable, it is a lot more difficult to build. This is definitely the most common type since you can buffer a lot more items into a single stack. This is definitely the more lag efficient filter. And now we come to overstack. I'm not going to talk too much about this. It just tries to take the properties of both of these, the A tileability of that, and the high stacking size of this, and put it all into one type of filter. But the issue is, is it does use stacked uh unstackables which is really really annoying to get but since you actually have to get stacked books and other unstackables and a lot of items for the f each filter once you have like a couple hundred of these filters it's gonna be hell on earth to make so i set up a small demonstration here to show you why we actually needed to properly batch the items before sending them to the filters so we want to assign everything to this filter right here since we only have red wool which would be coming from this filter here we want to send all of them into here and they should all technically be pulled down into there because that's running at eight game ticks and this is a filter that's able to process one item every eight game ticks but if we flick on lever we can see that that does not always happen after you give it a second you can see that it starts to lose items and this is the important reason why we actually need to bash the items just because if we send it like this, it, the hopper will go into cooldown before it's able to grab the next item and it will lose a few items. We've already lost seven and it has been running for very long. But how do we actually fix this issue? The easiest way to fix this issue is by actually batching the items using like hitting them up against a slab or something. So you can see we're going to batch the items a bit before sending them off and the hopper will reliably start picking up all of these items. So even though we are sending them still spaced apart, since the hopper is able to finish its eight game to cooldown before it's able to pick up the next one, we're able to reliably pick up all of the items. But now how do we actually speed up a storage system? For now I'm running it out uh, just one item every eight game ticks and it's only able to supply one filter. Thinking logically, it'd just be shoving more items into it and then waiting and then just letting it run through. But since now we are running at three times hopper speed, but this can only support one times hopper speed, this will eventually fill up and it won't be able to collect all the items. So after a bit, you'll see that it'll fill up to 64 and items will start skipping right over it, which we cannot do. So you see, having the same item types unloaded three times is not reliable and we will just be spitting items. But we also have to keep in mind, we have two other filters with different item types that we're able to filter with. So instead of assigning three different unloadings to just one item type, if we make them all entirely separate, and then we start it, we are unloading one instance of each item at eight game ticks. So even though we have this slightly chaotic stream, these filters are able to reliably pick them all up. Of course, we're able to scale this more by doing more filters and keeping just one instance of an item being unloaded at any given time. And for as long as I run this, this will reliably pick up all of the items that flow over it. Of course, we're able to do some better timings using something like pistons to better decide when we're going to send the items, but this is the very basics on how we're able to merge them. For the purpose of this storage system, we'll only be covering set base because that's all I really want to cover and that's all I really understand. Technically, I tried doing an SVAR system, I just, it, I couldn't get it to work, so we're gonna ignore that. <laughs> now, the case for set-based. Developed originally by Boyan, this style of array uses a memory or a set to keep track of what items are already being unloaded. By remembering what items have already been accepted, it can make sure that an instance of an item is not being unloaded twice so that the filters can always keep up. Now, to show you how the set works, I have these four boxes laid out. So, we got brown concrete, gray wool, orange wool, and a gray wool again. And this is the set, let's pretend like this is the set. So what we do, we take the first box, place it down, take this first item out, check it against the set. If an item's already here, it will pull that out, put it back in the box. But since we didn't detect an item in the set, we leave the item in there, break the box, send it to be unloaded. And we repeat the same thing for this box. Check, nothing there, we break the box, place it over there to be unloaded. Of course, you do the same thing, check the first item, realize it's not in the set, place it there, break the box, send it to be unloaded. 
And then we have this box here. We break the box, place it, check the first item, but we see we have the same item here and here. So it'll take out these two items, put one item back in, take this item, put it back in the box, break the box, and then recycle it. And once we've decided that we have all boxes that we could go through uh, done with, we take that item and we try to recycle it through here until this unloading, until the unloading of this box is done, it'll take out the last item, unassign it from the set, be put into a water stream. Then we're able to take this box, put the first item in here, and then send it to be unloaded. Of course, when it's completely finished, we take uh, the last item of each box, realize, hey, we could take this one out, take this one, take it out, take this one, take it out, and we are done with the unloading operation. Now that is the very basics on how this style of set works. So now that you know how the set works in theory, this is how it is in uh, practice. Now this is a set I designed. It's a little bit big. I could definitely make it smaller and probably shorter, but that's a lot of effort that I'm not willing to care about right now. But if we turn on the set, you can see that we already have boxes in here. It'll break the box, place the item, and then it'll start assigning to the set. Of course, there's 27 different item types in all of these boxes, so it'll assign 27 items into this set. Now, unlike other sets which have a comparator readout from the chest to see if it's full or it takes a guess to see if it's entirely full we use a counter back here which counts the amount of items that are in the set since we have all of these in the set right here we know that all of these items would be getting unloaded and then when we want to unassign i'll just for instance take all these boxes and then start unassigning them. You can see that in this hopper here, you can see the unassignment process going on. The neat thing about this one is it can run all of them in parallel at the same time and always do its operation how it's meant to. So you'd see the new set being formed, items being taken out, so it's able to put in new ones. Of course, if an item's already in there, it's gonna get rejected, but now this does run on an 18 game tick clock. Technically, these folders can work at 16 game ticks. It's just that you can't run both in parallel at 16 game ticks. Or at least you can't do it reliably because hashing order bullshit. But now that we have a set, we're able to see down here, we get rejected boxes. We put them into here and we put accepted boxes down into there. So now that we know what boxes are, have been accepted and what haven't been accepted, we need to actually unload them, where this bad boy comes in. So starting the clock, we're using something called the dueling hopper splitter, which basically just uses a hopper tossing a unstackable back and forth to figure out if it is unloading a box or not. So we take this first box and we put it into here. We push over the sliders, place the box, and then we set the filter. And once we detect the filter as empty, which we'll do in a second, it'll break the box immediately, take out the last item that was pulled from the box and toss it into a water stream to send back to the unmapper, which would be in the set. And then down here, we would be unloading these items into batches onto this uh, iron trap door to be sent to the actual storage system. As I said before, we're using something called a dueling hopper setup, and we have to use a global clock instead of a local clock to do it which makes it less laggy overall and also a lot easier because we can actually just stop the system and leave the box in the slice. For instance, uh, if I place this, even though the clock's not running, it'll place the box and I'll just leave it there. And then we can flick the lever and then it'll start the splitter, take the first item out, yada yada yada. And even when the box is in there, we can just pause it and leave the filter in. And then once we are done with the box, as I've said, we just use some neat timings to be able to spit out that last item. Now I have this observer here in these three rails just because without it, I found it to be unreliable in a couple of hashing orders. So that's just the thing to keep in mind. Chances are it could just be a skill issue on my part, but for the fact that I couldn't get it reliable without it, I'll leave it as it is. Now, down here, right here, we have what decides if it's a 16 stackable or a 64 stackable. By keeping 40 items in this dropper, we're able to see uh, taking a comparator output from here. If, it's a six, if a 16 stackable is put into here, it will make this signal strength 2 and that signal strength 1 pushing over this piston for the 16 uh, stackable line and this is the 64 stackable line so once we decide hey we have a 64 or 16 stackable we drop them as batches of 10 onto there 
to be uh, sent to the uh, storage system. So now that we know how this unloader array thingy mabobber works, we need to actually prepare boxes because simply just feeding a boxes won't work. So now if we come over here, let's take a look at this box here. So for it to work in this type of and for it to work in this type of system, we need a box that has the first slot available to have two of the same item types. But if we go into here, you can see that we have empty boxes boxes with only one item in their first available slot and some boxes that just have an unstackable where this bad boy comes into play this one is designed by glotz i stole it directly from the storage system because i could not be bothered to design my own at the same time but once we place the box here you can see it starts processing i believe this is 24 game ticks so uh it takes empty boxes splits them into here and then it takes uh, single items, it'll toss them directly into a water stream, and unstackables, it'll also separate it to its own separate water stream to like an unstackable sort or whatever you put on. So now that we found box we like, we set the first item in the slot as two, just so the uh, set can actually properly have an ass at least one assignment item and one unassignment item. Now this is a, I did design my own, it is a block shorter. That uses the same similar logic but the issue is is it is about four it's either like four or six game ticks slower it's not nearly as fast and is a bit more sketchy <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it works fine but like it's very very sketchy this was the first one this was the second one they use the exact same or very similar hopper layout so But yeah, you can see single items into there, accepted boxes into here, which all have their two items. You got empty boxes, which will clear that out so it doesn't overfill. And we have unstackables here. We got the same thing over here, unstackables, empty boxes, a two item box that is accepted, and single item. So now that we know how all of those parts work, once we put it all together, we get these two systems here. We have the eight times hopper speed variant and the 16 times hopper speed variant. So we take the first items, we send them to a temp. I haven't explained what a temp is. It's not very important. Basically just make sure that you unload or at least you attempt to assign every box into a slice before you recycle them. It's not very complicated. This does use a toggle state, but I don't think it's really that bad of one. Uh, and I don't really feel like being bothered to change it up. So and you see, we un we start to assign items. This one only has an assignment of, I believe, 17. Yeah, 17 boxes total. And then we buffer a few boxes here. And the rest of them are in the unloading array being unloaded. And then we toss them onto a trapdoor in batches of 10 to be eventually put into the water stream. You see, it'll unleash all of its items. And then if I stay on the water stream, we will get batches of 60 at the most. Of course, you can get 61 or 62 if you, the unassignment... Uh, Items go into the same batch, but I really wouldn't worry too much about that. Of course, this can be changed down to 50 if you think you're going to put in a shit kind of boxes into there. But the way we actually decide how many items we send is by using this clock here, which basically pulses this 10 times to be properly unloaded. And then we use a by six counter here just to... Um, so every six times this thing pulses on and off, we release the items. This can be changed easily by taking an item out of here. If you want to make it five, yeah. See, these are the items from the set that have been unloaded. But yeah, you see we have a few boxes in a slice. We could just flick this lever and it will pause all the clocks. It won't try to unload any more items from the boxes. I'll just keep them all paused there so we're able to stop the system a bit faster. Now we have to leave this clock running here a bit longer for about 20 seconds just because we need to make sure that the items around the trapdoor actually get released into the water stream. So that's the main thing I slowed down. There is a way to make it faster, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that. But yeah, you can see it paused and the system is now done. Of course, it's the same thing for the 16 times hopper speed unloading array. It just has eight more slices mirrored onto it. And we have to do a bit more wiring just to make sure that 
uh, it is properly clocked, unlocked, and all of that. And the 16 times variant is the one I'm going to be using in my storage system, just because it's 16 times hopper speed. Who wouldn't want 16? 16 times hopper speed so yeah that's why i'm using it now if we're comparing the glots unloading array to my unloading array my unloading array at 60 times hopper speed which is comparable to this is about 29 percent as lag efficient but it's about five ish percent slower and that's just because this uses instant dropper lines which makes processing times a lot faster of course if you add dropper lines to mine you'll reach essentially the exact same speed, but I don't really think it's worth it. Now that we have a way to quickly prepare items to be sorted faster than hopper speed, we need to be able to properly filter out the items to make them accessible to the player. There are a lot of chest hall types like basic chest halls, bulk halls, hybrid halls, and accessible halls. But first, let's talk for a second about accessible halls. I'm currently on my second storage system where I actually use accessible halls, and I just want to show you why they're not truly desired by a lot of people. They are made up of three different interaction points, being the box loader, the bulk st storage, and the box display. Now the main reason why they're not very desired is because realistically, if you are like straining the amount of items you have so you have less than a box, it shouldn't be here, it should be in a chest hall. And once that fills up, then you move it over to here where you'd have boxes. But when you already have boxes in here and in here, you don't need access to that. So realistically, uh, what you can do is just either have it like this but have the box loader just be a normal box loader not a non-accessible one because these you can't fully hopper locked this hopper is decently hard to lock you have these hoppers in here especially if you want to keep overflow these two hoppers are really hard to lock originally i did like these type but the more you think about it and even when we have it on cozy yeah this is just not very useful now the most common type of haul is just a normal chest haul Nowadays, 8 items a slice is standard with you going up to 10 items, which UI wise feels like the limit. Going 12 slices either expands the width or the height of the hull, and hopper locking becomes a bitch and it's really shit UI. For the one I chose, I went with the 10 item precise one by Command Leo. I don't know why I did this, but I made all the lines that used us use signal strength 1 hopper locking. Realistically, this makes no difference lag-wise since you aren't pulsing any of the dust, but, you know. For the two side hulls, I decided to use a hybrid slice that I threw together. It uses the Command Leo hybrid loader, which, if you don't know, just fills up the chest at the bottom and boxes the overflow for a higher storage capacity of an item type while still remaining they were able to keep a smaller amount of the items available. The hybrid loader is a massive component compared to the rest of the hull, which makes the hull really tall, but I also managed to keep all the hulls hopper locked, keeping another three items below the hybrid. And yes, the box loaders do have overflow protection. In the extensions of the hull, I break up the slice into 16 long segments to both break up the symmetry and add something like a barrier between item types. From the inside of the system, we are able to unlock all the hoppers that can buffer items to make them more accessible. By flicking any of these levers, the hull will unlock, indicated by the lamp shown in the hull unlocked. The next hull is the bulk haul. The main point of a bulk haul is to store a very large quantity of items that you would get from a, something like a farm. The one I use is a weird pseudomorph between Nur's bulk and Pyra's bulk to get the qualities for those bulks that I like. Each slice holds something like 1.74 million items, which is way more than realistically what any one person needs. Now the sorting of these items does not take place in the slice like many other chest hauls, but below the array in precision box loaders. This variant was designed by Pyra and it sorts bulk items from the water stream. Realistically, you wouldn't want to waste time sending boxes full of a single item type into the array, so there's a separate input for bulk boxes boxes which sends them to be sorted as a box into the slices. And the final slice I'll be talking about is the multi-item sorter. This is the Mooney Mess 5.1 designed by Mooney and it's improved upon by Sergi D. Because of the way the system works, it is forced to work a bit under hopper speed, so we do have to buffer items into a bunch of chests to make sure that the items don't despawn. And those that don't get picked up by the chest just go into a box loader to be put through the system later. There's also an injection buttons for the box loaders if you want to get those boxes out immediately. But, since realistically you're only going to hold like 1700 items in each one, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. There's also the unstackable sorting, which uses the properties of an unstackable item to sort. The one I'm using is a 1.20 variant by 77, there's like 27 since the name. Apparently there's an issue with it where in the armor stand slot sometimes items can be missorted, but I've never seen it happen and I've ran a few items through it. Even if it does miss sort, it doesn't really matter too much to me, so I'm going to keep using it, and if he ever releases a new one, I'll replace it in the world download. One last little thing, you may have noticed that in the 1.19.4 download, if that's the version you're playing in, there's a chiseled bookshelf here, which you can't actually get in 19.4. So, uh, what you do is you just take a bunch of shears, you take a unstackable item, it doesn't need to be unstackable, it just need to fill up all the slots, you place this dropper, uh, power it, give it 
power this one also. And then you can just fill up all the slots, put this dust back, and it'll be fun. And then it'll just skip over this since this can't put anything into there. Throughout the entire system, that is all the accessing points for stored items. There is, of course, other things to protect against overflow in the hybrids, bulks, multi-item sorter, and what have you, but those are all pretty self-explanatory. And now we come to the last part of the storage system, the peripherals. This is stuff added to the footprint of the system that makes the system have more uses outside of just sorting items. Realistically, this can be whatever you want it to be, but the ones I added are a furnace array, a brewer, a mass crafter, and a box display. The furnace ray is a 144 furnace ray that uses minecarts for item distribution. It was kind of just tossed together by me to accept boxes of whatever fill level and get those items boxed back up, but it doesn't really have any safety features to speak of, nor is it really the best thing ever, but it works for me so I can live with it. So this is the only UI for the furnace array, it's just the fuel, the input, and then the output. I currently have two boxes in here of cobblestone to show you that that's what I'm inputting, and they should both end up here. So after flicking on this lever, it will drop all the item. It'll drop the two items into this water stream. So that water stream will go in here. First box will be placed down. And then the minecarts will start filling up with the correct amounts and being distributed across the line. And then after the system's done, we finally have our two boxes of stone outputted from the furnace array. Now with this system, we're using minecarts to properly take out only 144 items before it gets distributed across all the lines into the furnace array. And we use a single static minecart that's just here to be able to distribute uh, items across. And then under here, we run minecarts to pick up all the items from the furnaces. And the reason we have this extra hopper here is just so no items, that this item always gets pulled out once it's done smelting so we don't have any weird backup shit. But once you see, once this minecart comes around, it'll get yeeted using that cauldron, the items will drop down, they'll eventually stack since they're so close to each other, and then they will go into this 6x loader. This one was designed by Acacia, and it's just a... it detects all six droppers, and it detects these three just to see, hey, this one, it'll say, hey, the box is filled up, or the box is overflowed, and we'll break that box and then send it to here. But as long as you don't input like two different item types, you will always have the correct uh, boxes. But if you do for some reason mix like this, you're not guaranteed to get the same item out. Most likely you won't even get the, you'll get it in two or three boxes. So if we come down here, after I've done all the tick warp, we have these three boxes. We have a smooth stone, but you can see that it's only has 36 in there. This one was completely filled up. But then there's this one, which only had 28 items in it. You can input boxes like this, it's just the system won't be too happy if they're too messy of a box. But after a bit, this is the box you get out from it, which is all the items. It's just you won't have the same order, but you will get all the items back. The next thing I have is the Universal Brewer. It can technically brew every type of potion and puts a lot of control in the player's hands. But there isn't really much I can do about that if I want to keep its size. Ooh, what the fuck? We're gonna... that thank you that that was that was pissing me off i'm so glad that's gone now so now this is the brewing system here it's a very simple ish user face to figure out and the one that i have that's down there which should be that one it has uh item input but in this one i change it so it accepts boxes but these are the uh, this is the main ui you have the needs boxes which isn't really necessary because it's pulling from the bulk and then you have glass bottle input because that's required you have the light which tells you if the system's on or off this tells you uh if the vest if the recipe is invalid it's not perfect it can only tell you very certain things so don't trust it entirely so for instance you have this control panel you have nether war you have the two ingredients you have the time the potency the splash and then the lingering so let's say for instance we want to brew a long fire as what we would do is we would add the nether wart we would add the magma cream and we would add the redstone dust now the way we decide just how many we are going to make is by how many of the lowest amount item we have so if i put in seven in here we're only going to make whatever makes like 21 potions of course if we do the same we're only gonna have 21 because that's all it's able to brew but the way we just select is we select this as long as these two lights are on that means there's items and that slice is selected we select this one that will turn off because that's the minimum ingredients for it but for instance if we do something like this 
that light will turn on because hey we can't actually there's no ingredients in here and this one has ingredients and as long as that's there we'll be good we turn that one on then that would turn turn on of course we have the time which we'll have there which we have items but you can't have both of these together but if you try to flick it you'll only have this one of course same for both of them you can only have one there's also for the splash you can have splash you can also have the lingering but if you want to go back to splash you'll have that but if you want to be able to have lingering but you don't previously click on splash it'll just turn on both of them and it'll stay on but once again we're going to be doing this here which is a valid recipe according to the system and then to start we just hit that there what it does is it just queues a bunch of minecarts with their items uh, in their slots. It'll drop them down into here, and then we will detect when this last item gets pushed into there and then start a cooldown clock. Uh, another thing we do is we count the amount of minecarts that we send through into here. So if we only send seven minecarts, we're only going to take out seven of these potions. Of course, if you put in a recipe that it can't handle it'll just seize the system and it will stop running it won't turn off the chunk loader it will just seize up and that'll be it of course if we do more recipes it'd be queuing carts right now since we're only doing one batch of nine it won't even try it but yeah that last item was pulled out it does all that and then it will release these mine carts in a second eat them those will go back over to there then we pull out all the potions which will be in this line here it'll be pushed into this box and then once this stops having items it will just push the item we'll push the box to the water stream which goes up this dropper line which we will receive in this box right here so now we halt we have all 27 potions brewed both the furnace array and the potion brewery can probably be upgraded pretty easily but i can make a whole video out of each of those so i won't bother going too much in depth about them and then there's the mass crafter this one was designed by nerves and i don't really know too much how it works so i didn't really touch it at all the reason it is off in the corner of the system instead of pretty close to like the main body of it is because in 1.21 i plan on only using the auto crafter which will come out during that update. So chances are when that update comes around, I'll be ripping out the mass crafter and only using an auto crafter. One thing I added that is pretty neat is the box distribution line. It runs under all the halls but one and provides empty boxes to the player and an alternative input to put items in to be sorted later. The lines run back to a bulk of boxes to make sure that the player never runs out of boxes. Once all the lines are full, you'll probably never need more than the amount of boxes in the buffer, so I really wouldn't bother with running out. I haven't figured out just how many it holds, but it's, it's a lot. If you plan on using stacked empty shulker boxes using the carpet rule, just slap in a double chest and you'll probably have more than enough. And the last thing we come to is the chunk loading grid. I have them attached to a wireless switch using daylight sensors. This can be exchanged for something like a slime tower, but I didn't really want anything just hanging down the storage system, so I just used the wireless technology of a daylight sensor. Also, if you want to move the chunk loaders above the system, then you're kind of required to use some sort of hard wiring line to hook up the system instead. There's also a wireless connection for the potion brewer and the furnace array, so those will only use their required chunk loaders to run. Earlier in this video, I talked about how we need to, like, Keep, make sure we keep hopper locking to reduce lag usage and all of that. So I made a selection of the entire storage system. And if we do count hopper, we have 11,753 hoppers throughout the entire system, including all the peripherals. And then let's look at unlocked hoppers, which is just that command there. We have 224 hoppers, which gives us a, a grand total of, we have a locking percentage of 98.1%. So that's really fucking good for the storage system. Of course, I know where some of them are at. Like this line here is entirely unlocked, but that's just so we can keep sort of a buffer there. I think there's also one over here. Yeah. Technically, I think it's possible to lock these while keeping its size, but it'd be really annoying. So for actually running the system, it's pretty simple. You have bulk items which go in here, which are entirely full boxes. Of course, you can input, uh, you can input um, mixed, but this it'll just kick it into the water stream down there. Of course, if you put it in here, it's guaranteed to go in there. So if we take something like, you're not full. You're full of one item. We put you into here. 
you will just be thrown over to there and eventually you will end up in this slice here. There it is. There's the box. If you want to input items, you can just do this, add items into there, hit that, it'll break it, place it down, kick it into the water stream to be put into this small bulk. Of course, you can do the same thing in any of the halls. You can go through, hey, I want to put items in here. You can toss items in there. Press the note block, it'll break the note block, place it, drop the box into this water stream, and that'll just go into the uh, thing. You can also pull boxes from here, and it'll fill back up. It'll just pull from the buffer. And then to start the system, it's this note block here. You hit it, it'll turn this thing on, and then it will start the actual unloading array. And you can see these lights turned on here. That tells us the system is on. And you can also, these lights here tell you that the bulk is actually um, full. Not the buffer. This buffer here is near full. It'll just take a signal strike to output from there and that is it for what i'm going to show you in the system if you want the actual world download it'll be in the description uh, of course if you find any problems put it in the cozy discord or just put it in the comment section i'll look at it and fix it immediately as well as quickly as i can uh, if you have any questions also leave those in the comment sections i hope i answered everything and if you most of the things if i haven't talked about there's signs that kind of tell you how it works already although who fucking knows when i'm gonna build this fucking thing <laughs> uh, it's gonna take so long